Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, I am Kate Lance with the Creative Coast. We are a 501c3 nonprofit in the coastal Georgia region, and we exist to catalyze the innovation economy. Lunchtime Topics is an educational program of the Creative Coast. And during this bi-monthly program, we bring on a featured guest who shares their expertise around a subject matter that can help startup founders and existing businesses grow their companies. Uh, today's featured lunchtime topic guest was also a featured guest in 2021. She spoke on how to turbocharge your website or turbo boost your website. Nadia Osman is a business consultant with the University of Georgia Small Business Development Center or SBDC, SBDC for short um, here in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, Nadia Osman joined the UGA SBDC in 2020, and she has over a decade of experience designing, marketing, and implementing programs for public-private partnerships, startups, nonprofits, and the U.S. Air Force, all value, uh, valued over at $6 billion. Um, her career prior to the UGA SBDC included developing affordable housing, new businesses, and public events in the central Georgia region, as well as launching the Shop Local Making Initiative the area's first makerspace, and Georgia's first young entrepreneurs academy. Her area of expertise is, of course, digital marketing, and she is a certified digital marketing professional. And today, she is going to be speaking with us during lunchtime topics about digital marketing in 2022 and what all small business owners should know. And we're going to cover what entrepreneurs often get wrong when it comes to digital marketing, the importance of developing a sound digital marketing strategy, uh, top components to incorporate in your company's digital marketing strategy and an overview of the various and most popular platforms out there currently. So welcome back, Nadia. Thanks for, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Kay. What a lovely intro. Oh, thank you. Um, we're excited to have you back and you never disappoint. You always come pack in information that we, we need to hear. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for you to share your wisdom with the community today. So without, you know, without delay, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So I always ask this question, why are you passionate about this topic? And tell us a little bit more about your background related to that. Of course. So what I like to think about when it comes to digital marketing and marketing in general is that it's all about storytelling and it lets you be creative. So I am based here in Savannah, Georgia. We have the Savannah College of Art and Design. I had a lot of friends who went there and they got degrees in graphic design or painting or the creative arts. And then I went and got my liberal arts degree, but I still had that creative side and I wasn't really sure how I could express that. And I was really pleased to find that marketing was actually a really great way to express that. It combines writing, graphic design, project management, and technology. So I think it's a really fit. Uh, I think it's a really fitting topic for the Creative Coast and us to be talking about today. But it's definitely something where you can, even if you are not a SCAD graduate, you don't think of yourself as someone who is particularly creative. With all of the tools out there, like canva.com, you can become a little better at graphic design and you can let your creativity show through marketing. So that's why I like it. But my background after I grew up in Savannah, I moved to middle Georgia and Macon. And as you were saying, Kate, I did a lot of work in community and economic development, always thinking about how can I help people. And so with community and economic development, you do think about housing and jobs and quality of life, but all of those programs can't be successful if you don't market them. And so when I started my career, I was the youngest one in the office. And so I was expected to know this technology. So the marketing came to me and I really, I have an MBA, I have my bachelor's in sociology, and I've later got a marketing certificate, but most of my marketing knowledge I have, it's been self-taught and it's, there is definitely not a lack of information that you can find from YouTube or Googling about tips and tricks for digital marketing. And so that's really what I did. And that's how we marketed these programs. And it really led me to focusing on technology and focusing on how we could grow entrepreneurs that were more in the creative arts. So like you mentioned, we had the first maker festival and maker space. We had a young entrepreneurs academy, a lot of first in the region. And really it all came back to how can we help people make a living doing what they love? Because if you have all these fun events, 
apartments and you have this affordable housing, but people don't have jobs, it really doesn't matter. So that's what I always came back to. I did a stint with the US Air Force. That was really interesting to learn more about the Department of Defense and their organizational management. But I'm now back in Savannah working for the Small Business Development Center. And a lot of people may not have heard of it, but they can see the logo here. We're part of UGA. We're funded by the Small Business Administration. And we provide consulting, training, education for small businesses. So focus, love digital marketing, love helping people make a living doing what they love. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here to talk about it today. And um so other question, you talked about your background a little bit and why you're passionate about this and what kind of companies do you work with specifically? What types? We actually are blessed to be able to work with all industries. Now that is for for-profit businesses. So nonprofits, we have other partners in the entrepreneurial ecosystem like SCORE that can work with our entrepreneurs in that area. But when it comes to for-profits, we can work with everyone from startup companies to existing companies. And whether it is service-based providers, so I had a call this week with a pest control company who is making a ton of money Think of, thinking about how to get rid of pest in the spring season. And then I've worked with e-commerce companies, restaurants, all different types of industries. And then really focused on companies that are ready, if they're in the startup phase, to launch. They're past the ideation, they've got their product or service, they're ready to get started. We can help them with finding capital, so business planning and projections that they'll need for that. We, of course, can do digital marketing, human resources. We have 50 consultants in the state that we can tap into virtually, so that's another thing I like to point out. My office is in Savannah, but we have offices across the entire state, and I or one of my colleagues can meet with you or if you're an entrepreneur and focus on really any area other than we can't provide tax or legal advice. And you probably don't want either of those from me. So I think that's fair. Yeah. So back to digital marketing a little bit. Um, that's great to hear about all the services um, that you guys offer. Definitely take advantage of those in the Savannah community. I just want to note that, um, you know, these are great resources and you can, um, you know, if you're starting a business for the first time, some of this stuff can be confusing. So having an organization like the UGA SBDC here is, is pivotal and can really help you get things going um, and, and moving. So, um, um, so back to digital marketing is what I was saying. Um, can you tell us about why it's so critical and important for small businesses? I still meet companies that say, oh, like, I don't really like social media. I don't like dealing with it. It's not something that like, I'd rather, you know, put that on the back burner, but why is it important for small businesses and startups? Yeah, Kate, I hear that a lot too. And what I try to help people think about is you are not coming onto social media as yourself, you're coming on as your business. So even if you are an introvert, you put on that, that figurative business hat and you're like, okay, now I'm in my business mode and you just have to do this. Digital marketing isn't really an option anymore. If you are not utilizing digital technology and tools to market your company, then people aren't really able to find you in the same way. And so reasons it's important. The number one I think of is branding. And a lot of people think of branding as just your logo, but Branding is really your whole story, what people think about you when they think about your company. And if you're not online telling people what your story is, what your brand is, other people will do it for you. So think about if a company doesn't have an online presence, but people have been reviewing them online. And so that company isn't able to respond to those reviews. They aren't able to tell their side of the story. That's one reason that digital marketing is so important. Another reason, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, that's where customers are. So I'm sorry if you don't want to be on social media, but your customers are there. So either you or someone that you work with, whether it's in-house or a firm, needs to be getting your company online. It establishes credibility. That's another big piece. If you were to search for a business and you're not able to find their online presence, you might question whether or not they're a credible, a credible reputable business that you'd want to work with. And then... 
Something else that I think is really interesting is that it's a lot more affordable than traditional marketing and you can get a lot higher return on investment. The email marketing, that strategy for digital marketing, that is actually where you can get your number one return investment. And I know a lot of my clients have this email marketing, this contact database that they've created, but they're not really doing anything with it. And you want to think these people have opted in. They want to hear from you. And the same for when they're finding things like your website and your social media pages. This isn't just you putting a blanket advertisement out to anyone who drives by. This is something that people are actually searching for. So you're going to have more conversions, more sales from it. And then the other thing is that a lot of free tools exist for it. So I mentioned earlier Canva.com, a great graphic design portal that you can use and then thinking about some of the top social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, they have free schedulers just for those platforms and free schedulers for platforms across the social media spectrum, but you need to be online. It's where, it's where the people are and it's where your business should be. Yeah. I think you mentioned the free tools, you know, I only use Canva now. I used to be the Adobe Illustrator Photoshop person and um, you know, I'm not like a designer by trade, but I got to say Canva's really made things easy for the really inexperienced to pull stuff together quickly. And I, you know, there's with it, there's really not an excuse to be, to not be putting stuff up on social media. They have templates you can use, right? Like, and just fill in with your text. So, um, and, and also the scheduling tools, you know, if you don't want to spend a lot of time online, spend a few hours scheduling in a, an online scheduler and, and even Facebook, they have their own scheduler and you can schedule to Instagram and Facebook that way. Right. Um, yes. so, so those are great points. Um, and then I think another thing related to, I don't like being on social media is like, well, I post on social media, but I never see any traction. And this is where this next question com comes in is strategy is really important for digital marketing. And I think people don't really under, it's like a kind of a buzzword strategy. So what's your digital marketing strategy? So how can you talk a little bit about how you help companies with their digital marketing strategies? Yeah. So the first thing that I like to do is, of course, meet with them and talk to them about who their target market is and what digital marketing and traditional marketing tactics they are utilizing. And if someone gets stuck on their target market, you know, we'll work through that because that is really what all of your marketing, all types of it should be focused on. And I think some people understand your target market as the basic demographics. So age, income, location, things that a census asks about, but there's also the psychographics. So what are your, what is your target market interested in? Their hobbies, their activities, their, their passions. And if you're able to really flesh that out, you can better determine what not only social media platforms you should be using, but your digital, your print, all of your marketing and advertising strategies, you can really hone in on that target market if you take the time to, to think about it. So we'll do a full review of everything that they have online and I give grades in, in some cases. So, you know, zero out of a hundred on how the website is performing. And this is after running tests that Google provides and there's some other tools out there that we use. And so we come up with this review that outlines for every piece of digital marketing they have out there, what does it look like, which is often eye-opening to a lot of clients because they haven't checked on their digital marketing presence in a while. They just set it and forget it, right? They created that profile, they created that website, and they left it alone. So I'll do a deeper dive from there. And then right away, I come, I come up with recommendations for them to make tweaks to deal with what problems they might have. And then we'll talk about the strategy and it starts with target market. It also starts with uh, developing a style guide that ties into their branding. So are you using consistent fonts, consistent colors? What is the tone of voice that you want to be using? And so basically I want to be able to look at different pieces of a company's marketing and still be able to tell it's the same company. Because if you can't, there's some disconnect, it doesn't feel right. And then 
after we've developed that strategy that takes into account who they want to reach and their branding and style guidelines and then what platforms they're going to use we also want to think about smart goals so making sure that you're not just saying okay i want to increase the number of visitors to my website well if it's a smart goal that means it's specific it's measurable it is actionable it is relevant and it's time-based and all that to say a better goal would be i want to increase my website new fall new users traffic by 25 percent in the next quarter so you're giving yourself some parameters and maybe it's based on in the past you have been able to increase it by 20 percent so it's a reasonable goal and so you're going to have metrics tied to that as well so in in developing the strategy you also want to know what makes it successful so that's the other piece of it and then after that, going back to utilizing technology, I want to make people's lives easier. You do not need to be on social media every day, but you can look like it if you utilize the technology to schedule posts in advance. There is tons of different types of technology that can automate text messages, can automate email marketing, can automate social media, updating your Google business profile, updating your website. And so I try to get clients to use that because this doesn't have to be something that takes over your entire life if you set up your strategy and you set up your tools to make it work. Yeah, the Google business profile is wildly underestimated. Like. Yeah. It's the one thing that like you, you can search a business and you can find nothing about them through your Google search in, in their business profile. And, but if you've got pictures up, well, that's a whole other topic. It can change the game for people coming to your space, you know? So that's, that's a great point. Um, so, so can we talk about related to that? What are some of the th top things entrepreneurs get wrong when it comes to digital marketing? Yeah. So one of the things and we kind of covered this earlier, thinking they don't need a website and that maybe could tie to thinking they don't need an online presence. So I hear from clients of all ages, actually, well, I have a social media page, so why do I need a website? And really, I think about a website as number one, something that you control. You do not control Facebook, Instagram, any other platforms that you utilize, Google, you don't control that. So if they block you, if there's an outage, if there's any issues, you can't solve it. You have to rely on someone else to solve it. So you want to be thinking about your website as the place that you own, and that's why it's so powerful. But then also some of the same reasons we talked about you want your company to be, to be online, they tie into your website. So your website can help you be credible, credible, it can help you be reputable, and again, it being the only area that you control everything on, you can push people to find the information that you want them to find. So about your services, your products, your reviews, your testimonials, your FAQs, there's no other platform out there that contains all of that. So the number one misconception, you do need a website. Uh, so misconceptions that you don't. Another thing, thinking that you need to be on all the different social media platforms. So one thing that I will talk to clients about is, hey, I checked your website. You have nine different links to different social media platforms. I open them all up and most of them haven't been updated since 2016. And so it does not look good. It does not look professional to have social media platforms that are not being utilized. And there's no need to stress or waste time, energy, and even in some cases money on all these different platforms. You only need to be on the platforms that your target market are on. And I would start with one or two and then increase from there. No matter what, I don't think any company that we'll be working with needs nine different platforms. And then another misconception is thinking that they can turn their marketing over to someone without developing a framework for it. So I've been hearing, oh, my niece knows how to do TikTok. I can just let her do my TikTok videos, right? 
And my response to that is, well, would you let your niece run your entire business? And they're like, well, no, of course not. And so you want to think about that, whether you are having a family member, a friend or a firm run or help with some of your marketing strategies, you have to develop the framework because at the end of the day, whatever they post reflects on you, doesn't really reflect on them, right? It's the company's brand that is out there. So developing that framework is really important. It's important. Yeah. I, I, one time years ago was working with a client who, um, did not want to be on social media at all and wanted to just turn the framework over to me. And I was able to like set them up with, you know, a brand style guide and, um, guidelines, but also just to that point, there's something about being involved in your social media and you, no one knows your brand like you, right? So I ended up telling this client too, it's like, you need to be engaged on social media as well, like responding to comments. It was back when like, I mean, not that they aren't now, but I feel like commenting on people's posts and actually engaging with people is huge. And I was like, you know, I can, I'll do that. But from your standpoint, sharing your knowledge, this person was an author. And um, I was like, you need to be, you know, doing some lives and and, and taking some initiative there, but they didn't want any part of it. And I remember just like reiterating that. So I, I don't know, I, I just wanted to add to that point a little bit. And it's so important to have a framework, but also to, to know what's going on with your marketing um, because you don't want it to get out of hand. You don't want it to get off brand. So um, yeah. And something that you mentioned, Kate, earlier is the Meta Business Suite. So remember, Meta is the parent company now of Facebook and Instagram. So if you go to business.facebook.com that opens up the meta business suite and I direct all my clients to at least look at it because you can use it as a one-stop shop for checking not only your comments and your reactions to your post seeing how they're performing and responding as well you can create posts in there you can schedule posts you can see your insights you can see your inbox and it's all in one place and you know when you log into Facebook you log in through your personal so it can get kind of messy when you're looking at notifications for personal on the same page as notifications for business. But I love directing people right to Meta. But um, another thing you said, Kate, is that, you know, we can only help as much as you will let us, right? I can, I can give you a million recommendations. I, I try not to do that. I try to make sure it's something that's reasonable. But if a company doesn't want to implement it and they don't want to pay someone else to implement it, then they can't be mad when they don't find those results that they want, when they don't see traction from social media, but they post once a month. I mean, that's why you're not seeing traction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, so you talked about the things that the mistakes businesses make. Can you talk about what you wish um, or some of the best digital marketing strategies that you wish more businesses would put into practice? Yes. So the first one is thinking about keywords. And I know a lot of people may have heard of keywords and search engine optimization, and they get a little nervous, but I like to take it really slow, keep it really simple. So you want to be thinking about what words, and a keyword is actually a phrase, what words would you want people when they search for to have your website pop up in the search results? So if it is our office, the University of Georgia Small Business Development Center, I of course want our name when people search for it to pop up, but I also want small business consulting, small business education, small business help. So thinking about all these different keywords that you would want your business profile, your Google business profile, but mainly your website to pull up for and making sure that those words are on your website. And so they can be on the different pages of your website. They can also be, you can create a blog that uses different keywords for each blog to make sure you get all those in there. You can create an FAQ page and you can reverse engineer so that if I wanted to make sure that small business consulting with some text that was on my website, on my FAQ page, page, that could be the answer and I could reverse engineer the question. The question could be, what do you provide? So number one, don't overlook keywords. If you want to pull up in search results for when someone types in your industry in Savannah or wherever you're located, but you don't have those words on your website, there's a big disconnect. Another thing, and I mentioned this earlier, matching social media profiles to your target market. And if you just Google 
social media demographics, you can see who's on the different platforms. And one thing I do want to point out is thinking about TikTok, 50% of people on TikTok are 30 or older. So don't think that you necessarily know everything about the demographics of these social media platforms without doing a quick Google search. Something else we mentioned, you can actually optimize your Google business profile. So go in to google.com slash business and there is an info section and you want to make sure you fill out everything in that info section and you want to make sure that you come back just like you want to update your website, you want to update your business profile every few weeks with a post, a picture, and you can tell when you see a business profile that's really built out that has great pictures and has great posts on it, it's longer. So you're getting more free marketing, free advertising, and it's more enticing. And more engaging. And then I think the last thing is making sure you're updating all these pieces consistently. So I recommend creating a content calendar in whatever form you want. You can write it down. You can use an Excel spreadsheet. You can use something on the web, but making sure that you're saying, okay, I'm updating my website on these days. I'm updating my social media on these days. I'm updating my Google profile on these days. If you do those things, you'll be in really good shape. Okay, so going back to strategy here, so what are some steps um, that you suggest small businesses take to develop the winning digital marketing strategy to get that traction they need and get their name out there? So got to go back to defining the brand. So most people, again, think about brand as being logos, but take time to say, okay, what colors do I use? What fonts do I use? What adjectives do I want people to think of when they think of our company? What is our tone of voice? And make sure that's consistent. Now, that is not to say that you can't have a piece of content that has different colors and fonts. But specifically, when you're thinking about materials that are created for your business specifically, so uh, the cover image, the banner image on your social media, on your website, on your Google business profile, making sure all those things align, but knowing that you can still have a different type of post for your social media, you can still vary it there. So defining your brand and then figuring out, we talked about this a little earlier too, figuring out where you want to be utilizing those digital marketing tactics. You don't have to be on every different platform. And then once you do, figuring out what success looks like you for that, what success looks like for that platform. Don't just set it and forget it. And then I got to go back to plan and schedule these updates. I do not want anyone to have to be on a Tuesday night at 8 p.m. saying, oh, darn, I forgot to post to my social media for my company. No, you should be relaxing with your family. You want to make people think that you're on social media every day by sitting down. I like to say, sit down on a Sunday or a Monday and just devote some time, beverage of choice, and make sure that you sit down and just schedule out for the week. And then you've got your social media post out for the week. You can check in a couple times during the week to see those comments that you mentioned, Kate, those reactions, make sure you keep up with that. But you'd be amazed. People will be like, wow, you're on social media every day and you're not. It's like your little secret. Yeah. I mean, I think dividing, like segmenting your time like that is probably the best thing for your mental health too, because if you're on social media all the time, you will go crazy. I've done it before. Yeah. <laughs> Managing, I mean, my old uh, freelance days, but yeah, like scheduling is so important to, you know, give, give you that peace of mind and not be turned on all of the time as well. Um, yeah. So can you talk about some of the best social media platforms today for businesses to market their products or services? Yeah. So the number one social media platform out there is Facebook. And I hear from some of my younger clients, oh, well, you know, Facebook has an older demographic. That's not where, really where my target demographic is. Every business needs a Facebook and an Instagram page, and they need to be updating it frequently and utilizing it well, because those are some of the top two platforms, you know, Facebook being number one that people are utilizing. So there is an audience there. And another thing is that when people search for your business or something related to your business, those links to your Facebook and Instagram profile can pull up in the search results too. So thinking about another way for people to find you is 
on these platforms. And again, if you're saying, okay, well, I think that my audience is more on Instagram. They're not on Facebook, even though I just told you that's the most widely used platform with social media scheduling tools, whether it's Hootsuite or Meta's Business Suite or CoPlanner, any of the ones out there, you can use the same content and repurpose it from one platform to another. Now, you do want to think certain platforms like certain things and certain platforms don't. For example, if you were to try to take a post from Facebook that has a hyperlink in it, it will not work on Instagram. If you were try to, to try to take a post that does not have an image or a video it, from Facebook and put it on Instagram, it will not work. So you want to think about the purpose of the different platforms, but you can utilize a really similar message. And then what I recommend to businesses is that they get their Facebook and Instagram to a great place where they are posting daily. They're using hashtags. They're tagging people. They've got good following and good engagement and then add something else on TikTok is exploding i wouldn't be surprised if it is you know one of the top five at least of the places that united states people are on in terms of social media platforms in the next few years it's just growing really rapidly like i said 50 percent of people over the age of 30 that's who the demographic is and you do have a younger demographic on there as well so Add TikTok or think about adding LinkedIn. That's really good for B2B or business to business. It's really good for setting yourself up as the expert. But again, try to get a handle on one or two platforms before you expand to another one and make your brain hurt. Makes sense. <clears throat> so um, when we talked about TikTok, you mentioned it a couple of times here, um, but you, I saw a presentation you gave on it and I was kind of surprised at the statistic. I can't remember the exact number, but basically there is a lot more people um, older than the Gen Z generation that are using TikTok than I think I realized. Because I'm not, I, I've, I've been on TikTok and I watch the reels, but it seems like a little bit more, I think it's a little intimidating for, for some people, but, but it's good to know that there's people that are in the millennial group and older out there. Can you share some tips with us about how to utilize the TikTok platform? Yeah, definitely. And Kate, I, I felt similarly, you know, I know that social media platforms, they collect a lot of data on you and TikTok does too. And I, and I felt a little uncomfortable, but then I got on there and its algorithm's really good. It figured out what I liked pretty quickly. And now I think it's a really fun place. And I'm not into learning all the new TikTok dances. And that's not what TikTok shows me because that's, that's not what the algorithm is pushing for me. And I think a lot of people get stuck on that, what you said, that it's for the uh, younger demographic. It couldn't possibly help them. But you want to be thinking about your demographic one is those younger people as they grow up, right? So, you, you know, you could be grabbing them now, but also people of all ages are on the platform. It is the fastest growing social media platform. So my first tip is to be authentic. You do not need to get on there and try to do dance moves. Now, if you want to, I've seen it be really funny when people, so maybe a younger marketing manager comes in and has their older boss try to do a TikTok dance. It's really funny. It's, it's self-deprecating. If you want to go that route, you totally can. But what people are really interested in is the behind the scenes. How do you make that candle? How do you create that product? How do you deliver outstanding service? And so just doing a behind the scenes video is really interesting to people. And another thing that you can do, thinking about our nonprofits out there, I follow an account. It is the Aquarium of the Pacific. I think they do a really good job of utilizing their lives for donations. And so it's a behind the scenes tour of the aquarium. People love it and they see all the cute animals and then you're actually able to donate through that platform. But for the most part, I would just say, show people how you do what you do and be authentic to that. And you would be surprised how interested people are, whether you are using new or old technology, hopefully you are doing a great job at it. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be in business. And so take time to just showcase what you do and how you do it so well. Another thing is using 
trending sounds or hashtags. So you don't have to use dance moves, but there's even a page on TikTok that shows you some of the trending sounds or hashtags. And this morning I saw Savannah Bananas used a trending sound and a, a trending a video movement that is related to Celine Dion. And they did it on TikTok. They did it during a Savannah Bananas baseball game and it, it blew up. And so that's one of my favorite things about TikTok is that even if you have a really small number of followers, if you hop onto one of these trends, you can get a million views and go viral really quickly. The algorithm is just really different than any other platform. So try to use um, some trending sounds, trending hashtags. And then the last one, I'm just going to say it again, be consistent. So whether you are starting off by, man, I can only do once a week. Okay, do once a week. Be like every Monday, a new TikTok is out, right? and then increase from there. And ideally on all these platforms, you want to be posting to them daily. And again, that doesn't have to be a live post. It can be scheduled. But according to the marketing gurus, that is where you can find the most engagement and the most return on investment for the time you're putting in there. It's when you're posting daily. Great. Well, now you make me want to go get a TikTok. I do have a TikTok, but it's just, I, now I want to start creating content on it. You should. I I roll. <laughs> Um, you, should. you should, you should scroll through and like what you like and don't like what you don't like and just be amazed at how it figures you out and be a little freaked out, but it's a fun time. Yeah. I've heard that. And I've heard the thing about the algorithm from a SCAD student, um, that just say, well, that it's amazing. Like it's much easier to go viral than on, you know, the other standing platforms out there right now. So, or really the um, Okay, so we're wrapping up here. We're going to head into some Q&A, but I got a couple more questions. So if people want to learn more about digital marketing from you, what's the best way to do that? So I'm really excited to announce we have a Digicon, D-I-G-I, and then con, digital conference coming up. So this is a four-part digital marketing series for entrepreneurs, and it is in person. So this is one of our first classes that we're getting back to in person, and I really can't think of any company that couldn't use a topic that we're covering during Digicon. So we're talking about website optimization, Google ads, social media marketing and ads, email marketing, website analytics. We're talking about it all and we're doing deep dives on it. So what we talked about today was kind of surface level, right? We only have a set amount of time. We're doing three hour deep dives that I'm teaching along with a local marketing expert, the head of Blue Edge Business Solutions. So we're really excited about it. It's a big series that's going on all year the four parts, but the first one's April 7th and we're doing pre-registration limited seating. So if you want to get registered for that, I highly recommend it. The link is bit.ly slash digicon 2022. And also the Creative Coast has been an amazing partner in promoting it. So if you check out their latest newsletter, there is a link to it. And then another marketing related we have, thanks to a partnership with the Savannah Economic Development Authority and the Savannah Regional Film Commission, becoming a film friendly vendor. And that's coming up in May. And it is all about how to sell your services and products to the film and TV productions that are coming to this area. And part of it has to do with marketing, because just because a scout or someone relate a, a, a production assistant found your company wants to do business with you doesn't mean they're going to if they can't find your website if they can't find a couple reviews about you that make you more credible so we'll talk more about that and you can register for actually both of those classes by just heading to our main website so it's georgia all spelled out sbdc.org slash southern okay i was trying to type it in i already have messed up <laughs> <laughs> SBDC dot four. Uh-huh. Okay. And then what's what's the rest of it? Uh Georgia SBDC.org slash Southern. Org slash Southern. Sorry, you said that. Okay. I just want to make sure that's in there so people can go there. Oh, it's trying to send somebody a private message. We do have some questions in here. Before we get to the questions, I am going to ask them for anybody that put them in the comments. It's not letting me type this in, it's still on Zoom. Okay, there we go. Um, 
I want to ask if people want to go to you for consulting, um, where's, what's the best way to do that? How do they reach you? So the main website actually has our training, all of our bios, because I'm not just a staff of one and a contact form. So if you go to that same website we mentioned, georgiasbdc.org slash Southern, you can reach out and say, hey, I saw Nadia and I'd like to consult with her for my business. And then we have a phone number. If you, if you just prefer a call, 912-651-3200. Awesome. Thank you. Um, all right, well, let's dive into some questions here that people asked. I think a couple of people had to log off due to meetings and such, but um, let's see. If you have a question and you wanna come off mute while I'm trying to scroll through these, feel free to do that. Um, someone said, I love the idea of, oops, I'm sorry guys, my, my computer's not reacting well. Um, not letting me control anything. Let me see if I can make it the screen bigger. So someone said, well, how important is starting a Facebook group versus a page? So I actually have hands-on experience with that. When I was working for another organization, we had created a group and a page. This was a long time ago. We really didn't know, should we be doing a page or a group? So we did both. And it got out of hand because you have to, it just adds another place that you have to post. And you have to remember that on a group, if you allow it to be open, which we did, other people can post. And so then you have to become a moderator of the group. And that's not what we wanted. So in certain circumstances, yeah, it's totally appropriate. For your business, create a page. And then think about maybe an affinity group you could create. So if I was a, if thinking about our company, we have a Facebook page, but then maybe I could create a group for small businesses in Savannah. But if I did a search, I would find there's already a ton, tons of groups. So I don't need to duplicate those efforts, but you could create an affinity group if it doesn't already exist, use it to promote yourself and connect with potential customers and other people that would be interested in partnering with you. Awesome. So it looks like Deborah asked that question. She has another question and Deborah, you might need to clarify this one for me. So you said within two weeks on TikTok, you had your three C interests, meaning I think you're talking about cooking crafts and crazy cats like that. So how do you add your coaching to that? Are you meaning marketing your coaching in addition to these other three things? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I have found is if you, so if you want to get something into your feed, if you do a search for it, so if you were into a really popular TV show and you wanted to start seeing more about it, you can go to one of the tabs, the trending tab, and you can also do a search there. And if you do that search and you start liking some of those videos, that will come into your feed. Now, if you're trying to market yourself, say you were trying to market that you are a particular type of coach, I would do a mixture of, hey, I'm awesome, this is why, and you know, you're telling a video, you're using a video, maybe some trending hashtags, but then you could also, I'd love to flip the script and have a testimonial, so one of your clients talk about it, and you know, if it's a service-based business, you can do that testimonial like I, like I talked about. You can do the same for a product, but what's also really cool for a product is that you could have maybe a user submit a review and then you could post that. You could have a video of you providing the entire service. There's a ton, tons of different ways that you can flip the script. The last thing that you want to do though on any of these platforms is only promote yourself and that's all you're doing you want to vary the types of content that you have to keep people coming back because not everyone every day wants to hear about small business consulting and the programs that we offer right but if i'm offering other types of content that's related that is funny entertaining inspirational people are going to come back because i'm a good I'm, i provide good content all around but then when they think, oh, you know, I need a business coach. I need, I, need a, I need a business consultant. Hopefully our office is top of mind because we've been providing great content. We've stayed in your newsfeed, things like that. And then I'm looking in the chat. 
<laughs> yes, uh, be careful with TikTok. Just like any platform, it can it can be a, a it can be a, a great time suck. There are a lot of ways that you can restrict the time on there too. There are just different settings, even different apps that you can download to help if that's if that's one of your areas that you're struggling with. And I know that Meta. So take, um, excuse me, Facebook and Instagram just created more parent, parental controls for those platforms as well. So if anyone out there is thinking about their kids, there's more ways to be careful with that too. Yeah, that's great. I, I, um, I think that sometimes, I think that's why people stay off of social media sometimes is because they feel like it's a, a time waster, but going back to, you know, what we said is there's ways to, um, we actually had somebody speak at, at a lunchtime topic about this, about how to still be online without wasting all your time, like how to manage, not manage your time, but um, it wasn't productivity so much as it was um, how to avoid the kind of this, the insomnia you're talking about. But anyways, I digress. I, I wanted to mention one other thing. You mentioned LinkedIn and um, I, I think that LinkedIn, I mean, for the creative place we're B2B, um, it's really powerful for us. And uh, we've gotten much more attraction there over the last few years. But one thing I've noticed, and I would love for you to speak on a little bit is the comments section, like how powerful that is. Whenever I log on, I see like so-and-so commented on this post and it's somebody that I'm not connected to, but it's somebody I'm like, oh, I should get them to speak at a lunchtime topic or be involved in this program. Do you, what has been your experience with LinkedIn? I guess, generally speaking for businesses, um, whether they're, you know, I also see people like Jesse Cole has his own brand. He's the founder of the Savannah Bananas on there. And he talks more so, I think, about leadership and stuff, but he has a huge following on LinkedIn. And it goes to show too, like even within your, like within your company brand, you can have your own brand that promotes your business. So I thought that's, I think that's interesting. Anyways, back to the question I was asking you, what are your, what's some of your takes on LinkedIn and utilizing that to the best of its ability? Yeah, so for LinkedIn, and this is actually across all of your platforms, even your Google business profile, you can optimize it. So you don't want to just leave things as default. You want to complete your profile and your bio at the top. You want to make sure that you're completing all of those sections. So you have a really well-rounded profile and you can do this for business and personal. And so I, I think that you should think about both. So definitely, you know, having your business profile out there and you're probably a little bit more comfortable with how you would utilize that because it's different. It's similar to other platforms. Now you would want your content to be a little more educational, but for the most part, most of the content that you have on, you know, Facebook and Instagram, you can come over and share it on LinkedIn for your company's page. But then you also want to think about your personal brand. So whether you are a CEO or a marketing manager, you are a brand in and of itself. And again, you can either tell people what it is or people can make up their mind about it. And so it can reflect back on the company or it can reflect back on you. What if you're a marketing manager and you're thinking, well, you know, I want to be known at, in this field because I know that I don't always want to be with this company or I know I'm an entrepreneur and I know one day I want to sell this company. So personally, it's important to, to have your profile optimized and to be sharing on there as well. And I think what's really important is to not is to be a little more welcoming with your connections. So I am not honestly afraid to connect with almost anyone as long as they have, you know, a profile on LinkedIn because you never know if that person is going to be that one person that you needed to make a sale or find that new job or connect with another company for an event, a sponsorship. Like you just never know. So I would definitely say expand your connections, utilize that platform. And like you said, Kate, the, the comments in there, I think can be really, I mean, the comments are, it seems to be, they seem to be a little more thoughtful than you would see on other platforms because it seems a little more personal, right? This is something that you are, you know, trying to educate people on typically when it's on LinkedIn. And so I think that 
those comments can be really great. And then another thing is LinkedIn is, you know, a professional network, right? Oh, I was just saying it's, it's a really unique platform that is, especially I mentioned earlier for, for those companies that are trying to connect with other companies, whether you're trying to sell something to them or just partner with them, those are where thought leaders are. And those are place, and that's a great place for you to connect. That's why it's different. It's a network for professionals. So making sure that you have a presence on there. So another thing that people don't think about when it comes to the personal side, if you scroll down your profile, there's areas for recommendations. There's areas areas where you can show off your skills and have people vouch for you. So again, whether it is to the betterment of your company or your personal brand, make sure you utilize that as well. I think that there's a lot more ways that you can actually be active on LinkedIn. They have groups and, you know, whether it's commenting, whether it's asking people for a recommendation, you can't do that stuff on other platforms. It's just liking, commenting, sharing. This is a different type of interaction. Yeah. You mentioned groups. We have a group and every time somebody posts something in there, not every time, but at least once a week, um, when someone posts, I, I get an email to my personal, um, uh, inbox because I'm, you know, I'm running the, it's on it's connected to my LinkedIn, but you get notifications there. Whereas I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe it's because I don't tap into Facebook groups or I don't have my email notification set up, but I don't get notifications when people post in the Facebook group. So I don't know, I think that's interesting, but um, I do think groups can be, you know, utilized purposefully on, on LinkedIn too. And, and you can, you know, if you get the right people in it, you can have some great discussions, so. Yeah, and I think I think another thing about LinkedIn is I would feel much more comfortable if my boss saw me on LinkedIn because I'm I mean that's a professional networking site versus Facebook because you know you cannot have a page without it being tied to a personal page, right? And so the lines blur. But on LinkedIn, you know, it it is about your personal brand, but it's all about professionalism too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Deborah asked another question. What do you think of alignable? And I'm trying to read the other part of it. And very God based professional networking platforms. There have been some interesting chats on both. Yeah, I encourage people to check out these different platforms. I mean, there, there, there are tons of them that come out all the time, right? And some of them are a better fit for certain industries versus others. And so that's, that's what I would recommend. You know, if, if you've heard something about it and somebody said it helped them out, whether you know that person or you just saw it online, download the app, see if you can get a feel for it, see if it could be a good place for you. And it might be a place where it's, it's a completely different platform. You can't have a company page. You don't have to post every day, but maybe you can come on and you can lead an audio chat about how you're an expert in the area. And then people can come and join that chat and they could become potential customers, clients for you. But I would definitely, Deborah, don't be afraid to explore. 